Hello, and thank you to everyone joining us here live. Welcome to another exciting Discover World live stream. My name is Danny. I'm an aquarist here at the Ryman Aquarium, and today I'll be introducing you to some of my favorite friends that I get to care for every day. <laughs> here we have Anubis. She is one of our ball pythons we have here at the aquarium. She is a non-venomous constrictor, and she is actually the smallest species of the python family, and they only grow to about a length of three to five feet. They can be found in holes, burrows, abandoned termite mounds, in grasslands and savannas of Africa. They can be shy, but they're also friendly, and they get their name from curling into a ball in a defensive position. All right, here we go. Just letting her get comfortable right now. All right, you can probably see her tongue sticking out every so often. She actually uses her tongue to smell, and the tongue will pick up scents and carry it back to an organ on the roof of her mouth, and that organ will read and send that information to the brain. She is very curious and she loves to go outside when it's really nice out and explore in the grass. All right, I'm gonna hand her off. All right. So our next animal you will see on the screen is our West African lungfish named Leopold, or Leo for short. You will find him in our Weird and Wild exhibit. Lungfishes like to live in the shallow waters of swamps and marshes. Often, these waters contain little oxygen, so they actually have two lungs just like us and can breathe air. They use their highly adaptive fins to lift themselves off the bottom surface and propel themselves forward. Also, because of the environment they live in, sometimes that water will dry up, and because of this, they will burrow themselves in mud and survive in these conditions for months until the water returns. They are omnivores, and here we feed Leo clam cubes, earthworms, capelin, and even small mice. Next, I'm going to actually show you two of our box turtles that we have here at Discover World. Our first one here is Boop, and he's kind of our mascot of Discover World. Everyone really loves him. He is our three-toed box turtle. He gets that name from only having three toes on his back foot. And this box turtle likes to live near shallow water to, uh, to soak, hydrate, and hunt for insects. Our next box turtle here is Beep. She is our ornate box turtle. They're actually endangered in Wisconsin, so it's really good that we try to protect their species. And they are a smaller turtle. They only reach to about four to five inches in length. And the cool thing about ornate box turtles is they are actually able to fully tuck themselves into their shell, their head, legs, and even their tail. And they have a hinge right here on the bottom of their shell that actually will help close up and keep themselves safe in their shell. As you can see, they're being pretty active and liking to walk around. Um, Another cool thing about turtles is their shell is actually made out of keratin, which is about the same material as what our fingernails are made out of. And they have a bunch of nerve endings in their shell, so it's really important to make sure that you're handling them carefully and not doing anything to hurt their shell, because that's also what they use for protection. They both like to eat berries, worms, and various vegetables, but probably worms are their most favorite. And they love to be together. They're really good together in their exhibit. 
All right. I can hand those off. Our next animal you will see on the screen is one of our lake sturgeon, Stanley, we like to call him. Uh, you will see him in our Lake Michigan tank. Sturgeon, our lake sturgeon, are also known as the rock sturgeon because they are the oldest and largest native species found in the Great Lakes. They are considered bottom feeders. So at the end of their elongated spade-like snouts, you may see two pairs of whisker-like organs located near their mouth. They are called barbells and they help locate fish so they can feed on the bottom. They actually don't have any teeth, so you don't have to be worried about them biting you. They actually have a sucker type mouth to help pick up food along the bottom. They are a very large fish and the largest lake surgeon ever recorded was six feet, 10 inches long and weighed 240 pounds. And they can live well over 100 years. And they are threatened or endangered depending on their location, mainly due to overfishing. And our sturgeon here are very, very friendly because we do hand feed them when we do dive in the tank to ensure that they get enough nutrition. All right, next animal that you see here on the screen is our Eastern Tiger Salamander. And you may be wondering why I'm putting on gloves here. And that is because most amphibians breathe through their lungs, but also their skin. So it's really important not to touch an amphibian with your bare hands because the oils on our hands can actually clog up their skin and we don't want to do that. So this guy here is Tigger. Come here, buddy. He's very active today. All right. So he is our Eastern Tiger Salamander. And they only usually reach to about eight inches in length. Sometimes they can get up to about 12 inches. But as you see, their tail accounts for pretty much half of their body length. And tiger salamanders are the most widespread um, salamanders throughout North America. They like to live in a variety of environments but they often are found hidden, burrowed in the substrate to properly seek uh, good humidity and temperature. So, and sometimes they've even been found to burrow more than two feet below the surface of the ground. Tigger here, he really enjoys um, eating worms and most of the time, like I said, you will see him burrowed, uh, but that's just because he's, he's trying to stay healthy, but he really, really loves his worms, and you can see he's very active. All right, we're going to put you back. Okay. Our next fish on the screen is our honeycomb cowfish. We like to call him Buzz. You can find him in our Caribbean tank. Uh, honeycomb cowfish are mainly found in coral reef habitats <clears throat> in the western Atlantic Ocean. They have armor-like hexagonal scales covering most of its body. They are named for this unique honeycomb pattern and some cowfish even have um, horn-like structures located near the eyes on the head. And this pattern, the honeycomb pattern, helps it blend into the reef. And these horn-like structures are thought to serve as protection for the animal. They only get to about 7 to 15 inches in length and are typically very, very shy. Our honeycomb cowfish buzz usually is always curious when we have divers in the tank, but he definitely likes to keep his distance. All right, so our next animal I will show you is one of our wood turtles. 
This here is salt. And one of our two wood turtles that we have here at the aquarium. And just like the ornate box turtle, the wood turtle is endangered in Wisconsin. And they usually get their name, the wood turtle, from having kind of a wood-like appearance from their shell. They are relatively solitary turtles. Um, and they will like to be in aquatic and also terrestrial environments. They spend the cold winter months hibernating in fast flowing streams. And a really fun fact about wood turtles is they actually exhibit behavior called the worm stomp, which involves them stomping their feet to imitate rain to trick worms into coming to the surface so they can eat them. Wood turtles walk, off, walk more than the average turtle, and so we like to let our wood turtles walk around on the carpet, outside of their exhibit, and even outside when it's nice enough. And salt here really, really loves strawberries and worms, but they also do eat a variety of other fruits and vegetables. Okay, put salt back. Our next animal on this screen you will see is our one of our three axolotls here at the aquarium. You can find them in our Weird and Wild exhibit. They are an aquatic salamander that doesn't undergo metamorphosis like most amphibians. The pinkish appendages that you will see floating around its head are actually its gills. They do have lungs, but they mainly use their gills on the outside of their body to breathe. They are nearly extinct in the wild and only found in one lake near Mexico City. But they do very well in controlled environments like aquariums. And the reason why they're so interesting and why scientists love to study them is due to their regenerative abilities. They can regrow their limbs, organs, and even parts of their brain without scarring. In the wild, they will eat pretty much anything that they can find, but here we feed them bloodworms and earthworms. All right, our next guy here, he's very squirmy, but he's very friendly. This here is our corn snake and his name is Michael Scott. All right, here, buddy. Let's get a better handle on him. There we go. All right, so Michael Scott here, like I said, is our corn snake. Corn snakes are also known as the red rat snake. They are non-venomous constrictors that are found in the eastern and southeastern regions of the U.S. They are nocturnal, so they pretty much will burrow the whole time throughout, throughout the day and then come out at night to feed. They can strike up to about one half of their body length, and they can grow to about six feet in length, and Michael Scott here is about four feet. Their size, calm temperament, and ease of care makes them one of the most popular snakes to keep as a pet. And I can tell you they definitely are very calm and friendly. Michael Scott here will love to go inside of your shirt if you let him, uh, your sweatshirt if you're wearing one, and even will sometimes get stuck throughout our key rings and we'll have to carefully get him out because uh, he's, he's very, very friendly and will go just about anywhere. All right. Our other animal that you will see on the screen is probably one of my most favorite animals you will find here. Uh, this is Susie, our cow nose ray. She can be found in our Caribbean tank, and because of its square, indented snout, and it resembles a cow nose, that is where it actually gets its name from. 
Kaunos rays are very active swimmers and will rarely be seen motionless on sea floors. Generally, they are found in shallow coastal waters and are known to form large schools and migrate long distances. The largest ever recorded Kaunos ray was seven feet from one wingtip to the other. They have large, flat, tile-like teeth on both jaws that it uses to crush hard-shelled prey. Susie here loves to eat mussel, capelin, shrimp, and squid. And we do hand feed her to ensure that she gets enough nutrition before all the other fish eat the rest of the food that we throw into the tank. And now here is our Discovery World President and CEO, Brian Woonar, to tell you a little bit about how you can help support our amazing species. Hello, I'm Brian Woonar, President and CEO of Discovery World, Wisconsin's largest science and technology center that is home to interactive science exhibits and award-winning educational programs. Discovery World is also home to the Ryman Aquarium and many wonderful animals that help us educate and inspire our visitors to become the next generation of scientists and innovators tasked with protecting our planet and freshwater resources. Today I'm asking if you'll consider supporting our Ryman Aquarium species through a contribution that will help our staff and volunteers continue to provide exceptional care for all of our animals. Your generous gift will be used to purchase food for our animals, upkeep their exhibits, and provide general care. If you are interested in supporting our species, you can find more information about each animal and the different giving opportunities at discoveryworld.org. Thank you for supporting Discovery World and helping us keep our animal friends healthy, happy, and fed. Thank you so much for taking some time to meet the animals from the Ryman Aquarium. We can't wait to see you here at Discovery World soon.